Tonight, a neo-Nazi in Pennsylvania, a small rural town near the New York border, splitting apart by a growing movement filled with hate. The man at the center of it says Trump's election has emboldened him and his followers. It comes as white nationalists prepare to take to the streets this weekend, one year after the deadly Charlottesville rally. Our Sarah Seidner is out front in Ulysses, Pennsylvania. I want to warn you, though, when you watch this piece, some of the language that you will hear is extremely disturbing. In the calm of this rural northern Pennsylvania town, a sign that hate lives here. Are you a neo-Nazi? Do I embrace it? Um, I, I don't try to push it away. Well, you're wearing a swastika on your shirt. Exactly. And you've got swastika flags. Why the flags? Why the shirt? Why these hateful symbols in this town? I don't think they're hateful. I think it's an ideology that has been completely uh, misinterpreted since the Third Reich. Okay, now I've got to stop like, you. I, I'm misinterpreted. <laughs> misinterpreted. Six million no, Jews no. were killed. You'll never There's sell me on that. Abs I'm not trying to sell you. Yeah. It is reality. It's history. It cannot be denied. There's Daniel Burnside is a lightning rod of discord in Ulysses, Pennsylvania. Population 690. With the help of the internet, his message has spread far and wide, giving his town attention it does not want. And rural America spoke up when they elected Trump. Rural America. And by rural America, he means white America. We're staring down the barrel of a gun here in white America. There's still 193 million white Americans. Yes, the vast majority of them are in their 60s and 70s, will be in the ground in the next 20 years, and therefore we have the possibility of becoming a minority in our own country. A possibility. It sounds to me of becoming a minority in our like own country. Like you're afraid of being me. And being me. This is my country. Is great. This, it, this is also my country. You guys didn't win the culture war. He invited us on his property to talk, but when he doesn't like our conversation, he explodes. Get the f out of here f now! We do, just down the street, we're met by a dozen residents who say Burnside does not speak for this town. There are families in this county that blame politics for people like him sort of being able to come out and be very loud. Is that fair? Our president we've got right now hasn't, hasn't helped the situation a whole lot. Uh, you know, he's done a lot of the same beliefs. You know, at least he won't speak against them, okay? This guy feeds off that stuff. So. Among the crowd, many with grandfathers or fathers who fought the Nazis in World War II. We're good people, um, and, and he's stepping on us. He's yeah. stepping on all of us. Uh, you know, we are all one, we're all one tribe. You know, and who does he think he is? Teacher well, Debbie Hamilton says she just returned from touring concentration camps in Poland. One of the things that we spent a lot of time talking about was passive resistance versus active resistance. So far, they've chosen passive resistance with Burnside. On the other side of Potter County, Joe and Shashina Leshner are convinced passive resistance is the wrong choice. I'm not saying you should go to their houses with pitchforks and guns, you know. I'm saying hold a peaceful protest against them. Traditionalist American Knights of the Ku Klux Klan Neighborhood Watch. After seeing KKK flyers appearing in their neighborhood and Burnside's decorations in their county, Joe did protest, only to receive a threat by one of the supremacists he stood against. They would look at me and give me the finger and even make little gestures, you know, like they were going to shoot me. Joe says the racial hatred intensified and his Jamaican bride arrived. In Walmart, you know, I got a lot of that. Um, this In their minds, if more people stood up against hate, the racist would be forced to leave and let love stand. The Leshners moved about four hours away to another small town, but Shashina says it's made all the difference. She finally feels comfortable walking down the street. And as for Ulysses, the borough president told us they have dealt with an outspoken neo-Nazi in their midst before. They pushed him out several years ago, but that was because he broke the law. And he says there is nothing they can do about Burnside unless he does the same. Aaron. All right, Sarah, thank you very much. Incredible reporting there. Um, I want to go now to Mark Lamont Hill, professor at Temple University and a political commentator here, and Amy Kramer, co-founder and co-chair of Women for Trump. Thanks to both. So, Thanks, Mark, uh, look, you heard uh, the, the, the man there. Um, the neo-Nazi, you also heard one of the members of the community there, that gentleman say, and I quote him, the president that we got right now hasn't helped the situation a whole lot. He's got a lot of the same beliefs. At least he won't speak against them. This guy, referring to Burnside, feeds off that stuff. Your reaction, is this enabled by the president? It is absolutely enabled by the president. It's exhausting watching this, you know. You have a president who normalizes 
white supremacy, normalizes anti-black racism. Even if he doesn't echo what this guy says, he creates an environment where that stuff seems okay, and that's how he feels. So it's not that he creates racism or white supremacy, although he may nurture it, but he makes an environment where you can say it out loud, which only creates more danger for other people. Not just abstract danger, not just theoretical danger, but real-life violence. Amy? Yeah, I listen, Aaron. I mean, that piece made me sick, too. I mean, it made me uncomfortable. I don't like it, and I understand that, why the people feel the way they feel about the guy that lives in their community. But you can't blame this on the president. He has nothing to do with this. I mean, we are in an environment right now where everybody is overstimulated. It's a 24-hour news cycle. There's 24-7 social media, and it's like a pressure cooker. And people need to take a step back and decompress and get away from politics a little bit because this is not healthy <laughs> for us to be always at each other like this. I mean. When you sit most Americans down at a table and talk about issues, we agree on most things, Aaron. But because of the 24-7 yeah. and the social media, it's everybody's at each other so, all the Amy, time and let we me, need to stop. I hear your point. Wait, and but I here's, here's, wait, hold on, hold on. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. This is, <laughs> okay, so if we're blaming social media and we're blaming the 24-hour news cycle, let's look on social media. Who's the biggest tweeter out there? Not Kanye West, Donald Trump. Let's look at the 24-hour news cycle. Who's the biggest story on every news channel? Donald, Donald Trump. Trump. If, we blame, yeah. if we blame rap music, if we blame music, if we blame movies, if we blame culture, we blame everything t down to the Teletubbies over the last 30 years. How can we not look at the fact that the biggest pop culture figure, the biggest media figure, the most powerful man in the world is Donald Trump, a man who has said there are good people on both sides at a white nationalist rally. Someone who says the Judge Curio's Mexican identity makes him incapable of being impartial. So, Amy, Somebody let me, who has said that... I, I just I mean, want to play some of this. Because, Amy, this I think this is the question. I want to say Burnside himself, the man that, that you know, everyone watching right. found sickening, you included, he told the Washington Post that since November 2016, activity has doubled among his neo-Nazis. Okay? So he's putting Trump's inauguration as the date that was important to him in terms of getting followers. And, 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 when, and when you hear that, that other gentleman say, the president won't speak against him, he's got some of the same beliefs. Amy, this is what he's talking about. Mark referenced some of it, but let me what just beliefs? play some of them and give you a chance. I'm, I'm going to play him right now. Here, here's the president. When Mexico sends its people, they're not sending their best. They're bringing drugs, they're bringing crime, they're rapists, and some, I assume, are good people. We're building a wall. He's a Mexican. We're building a wall between here and Mexico. If you are saying he can't do his job because of his race, is that not the definition of racism? No, I don't think so at all. I think Islam hates us. Uh, look at my African-American over here. Look at him. Are you the greatest? She is a low IQ individual, Maxine Waters. I said it the other day. I, I mean, honestly, she's somewhere in the mid-60s, I believe that. Amy, do you really think that doesn't embolden neo-Nazis, white nationalists, racists? Aaron, it doesn't. Why would it embolden them? I mean, I think that's ridiculous. I Look at Antifa right now. They've amped up their activities. They're attacking the right all over the place. I mean, is that the president's fault or is that the media's fault? Whose fault is that? I mean, it goes both ways. It doesn't make it right. Donald Trump is not a racist. And what is happening here is that people want to throw that racist label at him because they don't want to talk about the good things no he's doing well, right now. Because he's saying racist things. But, these, ahead, are, but these are complete, these are, these, are, these are straw men. First, no one said it's Donald Trump's fault. Also, this conversation isn't about Donald Trump being racist. The question is, is there a relationship between what Donald Trump's doing and how these people are feeling? The most compelling piece of evidence is that white nationalists are saying, yes, Donald Trump makes us feel better and stronger and safer and more confident. Yes. They're saying that the day that they can mark their origin story of getting stronger is the day he became president. And then when you add the laundry list of things he's said and done that they approve of, it goes to prove that he is strengthening their position. Now, we can have a different conversation about whether or not Donald Trump is racist, yes. and we can have a different conversation about the red herring of Donald Trump making the world better, which you were about to go into. But the point here, right now, is that Donald Trump makes these people feel better and safer and stronger, and everything he says and does is in line with their agenda. What do you say well, to that, Amy, that the man there, that neo-Nazi, said, I can tell you with certainty that since November 2016, activity has doubled. He is crediting the election of Donald Trump. He is the neo-Nazi. 
You, I mean, you know what? I don't know that that's true. I mean, so he's saying it. What I do know <laughs> is that Donald Trump But he feels it, Amy. Is, doesn't that matter? Isn't Donald that what Trump, emboldens a racist and a hateful person? He's, he's Donald crediting Trump the has president. No, he has no control over who supports him and who doesn't. I mean, he can't tell people not to support him. And he certainly can't go out there and micromanage yes, these groups and communities across the, the country. I mean, what he he's trying to do is... He absolutely can tell people is, not to support wait, him. can I finish? I let you talk, Mark. Let me talk. What you don't want to talk about is that African-American approval numbers for Donald Trump have doubled in the past month, from 15 percent to almost 30 percent. I mean, that's the thing, because he's creating jobs. He's The economy's back on track. He's doing doing exactly what he said he was going to do. And that's a big story. But instead, it's like, squirrel, look over here at this. I mean, this guy is nobody in a little town of 650 or 690 people in a nation of how many millions. I mean, he's no one. And just putting it on the news is only giving him advertising. I mean, that's what we're doing there are is massive advertising. massive rallies planned for this weekend by neo-Nazis. What's that? There are rallies. There are, there are people who are coming out. This is not something that happened before, Aaron, Amy. I mean, what are we going to do? I, I can't stop that. It doesn't mean I I'm not saying you can. It. I'm simply saying, do you acknowledge that the president of the United States is part of the reason? He said no, there's good people not. on both sides. I, I don't know how you can't acknowledge that. It's, you may want to say he's not, not a reason. racist, but you got to acknowledge that he has no, empowered these people to hear their voice. What is happening is that everybody tries to throw the racist label at him because there's no way to, I mean, how do you push back against that? You can't totally debunk it because you can't prove what's on somebody's heart. That's the problem. And so when you can't win but on the facts we can't on totally the economy. Debunk it. I mean, that's a horrific thing to have to admit about a guy that you support. <laughs> no. Isn't right. you? I can't no, totally Mike, debunk he's that he's not, not a, a white supremacist. He's not a racist. He's not a white supremacist. I mean, that's that is ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I, I don't think it, I mean, we can disagree okay. on that. I, I don't think it's ridiculous. When you call the countries in Africa blank hole countries, when you say Judge Curiel's Mexican identity makes it impossible for him to be impartial, when you when you refer to Mexicans as rapists and thieves, when you go over and over down, when you when you go to a white supremacist rally or, or, or hear the news of a white supremacist rally and say there are good people on both sides, there aren't good people at white supremacist rallies. The fact that he said that, again, awful. The fact that he would not denounce so, Mark, certain people let me is ask you a question, Mark. Let me ask you this. If he's a racist, then why did he just grant Alice Johnson clemency when Barack Obama wouldn't? Tell me that. Uh, why did he let her out of prison? That's the Kim Kardashian. You can... Mark. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm very familiar yeah. with it. You can grant someone clemency and still have a belief that they're inferior. You can grant someone clemency and still think that their countries of origin, like Africa, are blank hole countries. They're, they're not competing arguments. Yes, I'm not saying he's never done anything for a black person. He may have loaned a black person money, given him a job, given him a big hug, put him on apprentice, given him a White House position. That doesn't change the fact that he, had, that he says things and does things as far as policy goes that reflect a racist okay. agenda and an attempt to appeal to white supremacy. All right. That's the problem. All right, we'll leave it there. That's Thank why you African American yeah. unemployment is at the lowest it's ever been. Okay, thank you both. That's I not a racist policy. I appreciate your time.